You always hear that you should back up your computer files in case of an accident, right? But doesn't that mean you have to get some pricey external hard drive or maybe pay for some service? No, 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 my friends. The answer may be rocking away in your very own hands here. I'm Tom Merritt, editor from CNET.com. And on this edition of Insider Secret, I'm going to show you how to use your music player as a hard drive. Since some 80% of you have an iPod out there, we're going to uh, demonstrate how to do this using the little white beast here. But you can use almost any music player as a hard drive. Cal on iAudio, for instance, even the tiny little shuffle works. Now, some of these are even easier to set up, but if you're using an iPod, you'll need to tell the computer to recognize the disc in here as a hard drive. So, first things first, hook up your music player as usual. Now, if you're not using an iPod, you may be able to see this as a hard drive already. If you're using a Mac, look in the Finder. If you're using a Windows machine, look in my computer. If you see your music player showing up as a hard drive, open it up. See some files and folders? You're done. You can skip all this iTunes chicanery I'm about to show you. However, for us iPod users, launch iTunes as usual, if it hasn't launched itself already, and then click on the iPod icon. Go to the Music sub-tab. See that there? And then look for that little checkbox that says Enable Disk Use. Check that little box. That is telling your computer that your iPod is a hard drive. Computer, my iPod is a hard drive. Now the other thing this means is that you're going to have to eject the iPod from your computer manually every time you're done using it. That doesn't mean you press some button and it flies off. It's this little button right over here next to the name of the iPod in the left side of iTunes. When you press OK, you may get a little warning screen that tells you that this is dangerous or whatnot. Just tell them it's OK. You saw it on CNET. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. Now, if you have an iPod Shuffle, it's a little different. You've got much less space to work with. So they give you this little slider here that you can use to allocate how much space goes to iTunes Music and how much to the rest of your data. Now go open up Finder if you're using a Mac, or My Computer if you're using a PC. It's going to work just like any folder on your computer. You can create new folders, drag files in, etc. If it's not working, make sure you're not trying to use a Mac iPod on a Windows machine. Those two are incompatible. It's like Brad and Jennifer, heavens. The things are formatted differently. They won't be able to talk to each other. Also, a word to the wise. You see all these weird folders that are already in here? Those are the iPod system folders. Stay away. At least if you want to be sure your iPod keeps working the way you're used to, like working at all. Just add stuff in the empty space. Don't subtract anything. One more little bummer for you Windows users. You won't be able to store a file that's bigger than four gigabytes on your Windows iPod. That's because it uses the FAT32 file system instead of the NTFS file system. FAT32 can't store large files the way NTFS can. Now, you could turn this into an NTFS drive, but then it wouldn't really be an iPod anymore. It wouldn't play music or anything. But that's it. You've got yourself a little personal data device. This is more than just a music player here. You can even install programs on this thing, although they're going to run a little slower because the hard drive in an iPod spins a little slower to save on battery life. That's it for this edition of Insider Secret. I'm Tom Merritt for CNET.com. Enjoy your new hard drive.